Um, when we were trying to figure out where we could be, we all said, let's go to Cleveland. And I want to thank Congresswoman Marsha Fudge for hosting us. Every time I think about Trump, I get allergic. <coughs> Boy, we have 63 days to go. Thank you. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> well, you just heard the next vice president, didn't you? <coughs> in, a, in addition to thanking Marsha Fudge, let me also thank your great senator, Sherrod Brown. <coughs> also, <coughs> excuse me. Also, two other great members of Congress, Tim Ryan and Joyce Beatty. And your mayor, thanks to Mayor Jackson. <coughs> and I hope, I hope that Ohio will send Ted Strickland to the Senate. <coughs> now, behind me are some of the great labor leaders of our country. Randy Weingarten, <coughs> Lee Saunders, Rich Trumka. I'm proud to be on the same stage with them because they're always fighting for working families. <coughs> now, once I get over my allergic reaction, let me say that we're here in part because we know how important this election is to Ohio. <coughs> it's not just, as Tim said, that Ohio is one of those battleground states you hear about every four years. It's that Ohio represents everything that's great about America and all of the challenges and the opportunities that we face. That's why this election is critical to every person in this state. And what I want to emphasize is I know we can't face our problems alone. We have to work together. We believe we are stronger together. And that is in stark contrast to Donald Trump. Remember what he said at his convention. He said, I alone can fix it. Now think of what that leaves out, my friends. That leaves out all of our troops on the front lines. It leaves out our police officers and firefighters who run toward danger. It leaves out doctors and nurses who care for us. It leaves out teachers and educators who care for the most important people in our lives, our children. 
it leaves out everybody except him. And when he says, I alone can fix it, that clearly demonstrates he doesn't understand how America works, how we got great and why we are great today, and what we need to do together to face the future. Because our campaign is about we will fix it together. We will work together. We will bring our country together. And what better example of that are our labor unions. They are built on the principle of solidarity. They look out for each other. They fight for fair wages and collective bargaining for safe working conditions. Just last week, we learned once again, because another study came out that confirms what we already knew. When more workers are in unions, wages are higher. And not just for union members, but for all workers. That's why if Tim and I are elected, we're going to say no to attacks on unions, no to rolling back collective bargaining, no to unfair trade deals like TPP, no to pension cuts that deny you the secure retirement that you've earned. No to right to work because right to work is wrong for workers and wrong for America. But we're not just about saying no. We're going to say yes to standing up for workers' rights and dignity. Yes to good jobs and benefits. Yes to the American dream. It is big enough for everyone to share the promise. And so that's why during this campaign, I've been running a campaign based on issues, not insults. I believe anyone who asks for your vote should tell you what they're going to do. Starting tomorrow, you can read about the plans Tim and I have, because we're putting out a book. Does somebody have a copy of that book? Hey, somebody back there, you got a copy of the book? I can show the crowd. We're putting out a book called Stronger Together. That's more than a slogan for the campaign. That's a guiding principle for the future we want to build. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, some people say, wait a minute, you've got so many plans. Well, you're right. I do have plans. You know why? Because I want you to know what I want to do to help you and what kind of results we're going to work to achieve. I have this old-fashioned idea that if you're asking somebody to vote for you, they ought to tell you what they want to do and then hold you accountable when you get elected. And I'll tell you what, our plans start with the very simple idea that we're going to get the economy to work for everyone, not just those at the top. We're going to do it with the biggest investment in new jobs that we've had since World War II, more infrastructure jobs advanced manufacturing jobs, clean renewable energy jobs. Anyone willing to work hard should have a job that can support them and their families, a job with dignity, with only the future to be proud of, not to worry about. We're also going to offer new solutions for families. Families are different today than they were in the 1950s, for heaven's sakes, so we need to make sure we help support families the way they are today, not way back when. Helping people support and balance family and work with paid family leave, earned sick days, affordable child care, and finally guaranteeing equal pay for women's work. And here's our book. It's called Stronger Together for a Reason. You can read about what we want to do on the economy and everything else. It'll be available starting tomorrow. Because the choice for families has never been clearer. Just look at Donald Trump's track record 
when it comes to hardworking men and women. I know, I'm allergic to it too. But you have to look at his record. There may be people you know who are thinking about voting for him. And you know, friends don't let friends vote for Trump. <laughs> and here's what you can tell him among many things. He hired a union busting firm to break up an organizing campaign at his hotel in Las Vegas. He built his career on refusing to pay workers, plumbers, painters, glass installers, marble installers, people who did work for him and then he refused to pay him. He stiffed small businesses like my dad. My dad and Tim's dad had really small businesses that gave us a good middle class life. I am just so grateful my father never got a contract from Donald Trump. <laughs> my dad worked hard, he printed drapery fabrics. And I would go help him sometimes. And there'd be a long table in his print plant. And the fabric would be rolled out. And then the silk screens would be laid down. And then you'd pour the paint in. Then you'd take the squeegee and you push it across the screen. You lift it up, you go all the way down. Then you go to the second table, all the way back. Then when he finished, he'd load those drapery fabrics into his car and he'd deliver them. I don't know what would have happened to my family if he had done a big job thinking it was a good deal for Trump and he gets there and the Trump people say, we're not gonna pay you. And then after harassing, maybe they say, okay, we'll pay you 30 cents on the dollar. He's driven hardworking people into bankruptcy and taken six bankruptcies himself. Now here in Ohio, you know very much that a president makes decisions that affect people's lives and livelihoods. When millions of jobs were on the line in the auto industry, President Obama made the right decision to save the auto industry. I know we've got some UAW members here. I was proud to support him then. I'm even prouder now that the auto industry just had its best year ever. Think how differently things could have turned out. I know this is hard to imagine if it had been Donald Trump in the Oval Office. Last year, remember this, last year he said it didn't matter whether or not we saved the auto industry. Either way would have been acceptable. He said we could have just let it go. Never mind the 850,000 people in Ohio and millions more across the country whose jobs and paychecks were tied to the auto industry. Now what else could we expect from someone whose most famous words are, you're fired? This is the kind of difference that this election really poses. People like Tim and me, who want to create more good jobs with rising wages and benefits for everybody willing to work hard. That's the basic bargain of America. And somebody who stiffed people, took bankruptcy and laid off people. One of his bankruptcies put a thousand people out of work. Every time you hear him talk about how he knows how to create jobs, just look at the facts. Educate yourself and your friends and your colleagues because the kind of bluster and wild claims that he makes about everybody and everything don't stand up to any scrutiny. The same is true when it comes to whether we keep our country safe. Stronger together means working with our allies and our partners, right? We're not just electing a president, we're electing a commander in chief. So when Donald Trump says, and I quote, I know more about ISIS than the generals do, when he claims, as he has, that our armed forces are a disaster, or he insults a Gold Star family, that's not just wrong and offensive, that's dangerous. Our military is a national treasure and a president must respect the men and women 
who risk their lives and wear the uniform of our country. Some of you know Tim Kaine's son is deployed right now. He's a Marine. Tim and I will not only respect our men and women in uniform, we will protect them and we will ensure that they are given the resources that they need to do the dangerous missions we ask them to do on our behalf. Now last week, we saw even more evidence that Trump is temperamentally unfit and totally unqualified to be president. In just a few hours, he managed to turn his trip to Mexico into an embarrassing international incident. He even got into a Twitter war with the president of Mexico. And then he delivered his most hate-filled, hard, hardline speech yet, doubling down on his absurd plans to send a deportation force to round up 16 million people to deport them. <laughs> now, you can't make this stuff up, can you? He can try to distract with divisive, dangerous rhetoric. He can try to fool voters into thinking somehow he's not as harsh and inhumane as he seems, but it's too late. When you see what he has said and done in this campaign, when you see that he can't even go to a foreign country without getting into a public feud with the president, I think the answer is clear. Donald Trump does not have the temperament to, <coughs> to, to, to be our commander in chief. <coughs> Imagine him in a real crisis. I've said it before and I believe it. A man you can bait with a tweet cannot be trusted with nuclear weapons. <laughs> now look, I know that these elections are always tight and hard. I'm not taking anybody anywhere for granted. That's why we're here today, because we need your help. We need to make sure we have an election that validates the kind of positive future that will make life better for the people of Ohio. And empty promises and racist attacks won't do that. It won't get your family a job. It won't keep our troops safe. It won't heal the divides in America. I've spent my life fighting for kids and families. During the fight for health reform, some of you remember, powerful interests blocked our way, but I didn't give up. I turned around, I worked with Republicans and Democrats to help pass the Children's Health Insurance Program that covers eight million kids today. That's how you deliver real results. You can't get discouraged, you can't give up, you can never quit. But you gotta start from the right values and principles. You've gotta believe in our country. You've gotta believe in the American people. I'm asking for your help in these next two months. I'm asking you to reach out to your friends, your neighbors, your family, everybody you can possibly touch. I'm asking you to join this campaign. You can go to HillaryClinton.com or you can text JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 47246 because we want to win Ohio. <laughs> but you know, we don't want to just win it for the sake of winning it. We want to win it so that we can go on to the White House next January and get to work for you. <laughs> we want to win it so we can take all the plans and all the ideas that will improve your lives, that will get the economy working for everybody, not just those at the top, which will help make education affordable so college is within reach of everyone and help you pay back your student debt. We want to defeat ISIS, keep our alliances strong. We want to break down the barriers that hold any American back. That's why we're running. We're not running because 
It's a nice thing to do after you have a reality TV show, right? We're running because between Tim and I, we have a lot of years, a lot of years of public service. And we believe in what we can do together. And we believe that we can make our country even greater. So please, join the campaign. Be part of us having an American future that is better than the past, that creates the opportunities for every single man, woman, and child. Thank you, and God bless you.